Hi there, I'm Olivia. Um, I am here with another video in the Blackbird Designs Quilt Along series. It's a bit overdue. It's um, October now, as you can see by that happy jack-o'-lantern. Um, but I am back. <laughs> I um, am one of the co-hosts for the Blackbird Designs Quilt Along um, with my friend Lori, tech stylist. Um, the hashtag is BBDQAL. Um, it's just focusing on quilts um, by Blackbird Designs, um, a lot of which is hand applique. Uh, Lori and I have both done some videos um, that are available on YouTube for you if you want to check them out. Um, videos showing some of the different books and patterns that are out there, um, along with how we do our hand applique. So um, I've done a few previous videos that you might have seen where I showed um, the tools I use for hand applique, the method that I use, which is AppliQuick, in preparing pieces for applique, and then how I sew on my pieces. Um, and then I wanted to make this one last video where I show you how I do my big stitch hand quilting. I learned how to do big stitch quilting um, from a YouTube tutorial by Suzy Quilts, and I will link that down below. I recommend checking it out. Um, I have been working on this block Bluebird from the Fresh Picked book. By Blackbird Designs um, in, these, in this series of videos. Uh, if you haven't tried hand applique before, um, I would recommend trying one block. Um, you know, it's great if you want to throw yourself into a full quilt. I have done that and it's a lot of fun, um, but it, it's a big project and it takes a long time to complete. So, um, you know, I kind of want to show you how you could try making just one block and then um, you could even quilt it yourself by hand or you could do it on your machine, whatever you prefer. And you could just make like a finished pillow or a project bag. Um, in this video, I'm going to show you how I do the quilting. I'm not going to show you how to make a project bag. Um, but I will reference one and link it down below um, by the Primitive Stitcher, who's Suzette. Um, I use her tutorial to make the project bag that you'll see um, completed at the end of the video. So I'm going to get right into it. Um, and here's how I do my big stitch quilting. Okay, so here is um, what is going to be the main piece of my project bag. Here is the piece that I appliqued um, in my previous videos. Um, I personalized this. It's going to be a gift. And um, I did a little um, monogram here. Um, the pattern, this pattern I took from um, a booklet by Stacy Nash called Love Letters. And then um, I pieced this into the size that I needed for the front of my project bag that I'm making. Um, the project bag that I'm making is um, what you would call a front zipper project bag. Um, the pattern I use for mine is um, from a tutorial by Suzette, who's the primitive stitcher, and I will link her video below. Um, some changes I made on mine is that I'm going to do a half inch seam allowance on the sides when I sew this together. So this front piece is just a little bit bigger than she would have you make in her video. Um, I just know that uh, sometimes I, when I do a quarter inch on these bags, sometimes I miss um, getting everything to, in the seam together. And then I have little holes that I need to fix. So that is user error, but that's why I do that. Um, I want to show you a project bag I've made in the past. Um, this is following kind of the same size dimensions, and this is incorporating the big stitch quilting that I'm going to show you today. Um, but this is what a front zipper project bag looks like. Um, the front piece consists of two pieces of fabric with the zipper. Um, up there so um, and then you have one big piece on the back um, on the back of mine I've just got regular fabric um, and the one that I'm going to make today I'm going to do a quilted pieced backing um, I didn't piece the back on that but I did piece it on here um, I did a uh, kind of I mean this is a very kind of I don't want to say sloppy but um, just fun handmade I tried to mimic the snake this is a um, Plum Street samplers pattern called scary one and um, so I did, I think these squares finished at one inch. You know, you can see here, I, I got a little creative. Um, but I wanted to show this to you because this incorporated big stitch quilting. In, in fact, I think this may have been possibly the first thing I big stitch quilt, quilted, um, definitely one of. Um, so I just did a diagonal line. There's, you can see these stitches aren't exactly uniform. Um, that's the goal, I would say, but um, it takes a little practice. So 
Um, so that's what I'm going to be making. So you can see there's three main pieces for the exterior. Of course, there's a lining, um, and that's separate. And the lining, I will do just the fabric. I won't be quilting the lining. Um, but the front will be quilted. So now that you've seen how it's made of three pieces, let me show you my three pieces. So this is the front main kind of feature piece on the front. Um, you could make a project bag with the zippers on the top. That would be beautiful too. Um, the reason I'm doing this as a front zipper pouch is that I want one main front piece um, versus making, you know, if I used two of these panels, then maybe I would do a zipper top bag um, because there would be no front or back. Um, so here's the piece that I'll have above the zipper is pretty plain. Um, I just have the same fabric um, and I will do a little bit of big stitch quilting on that as well. And then the backing, I just I just did a scrappy piece to backing. I took scraps I had that I <clears throat> felt were in the same color family. Um, I think some of these are even in the applique piece. Um, I made just a bunch of strips that were all the same width. I believe I cut them at two inches, um, so they finished at one and a half inches. Um, they're all different lengths, and I pieced those together. And this will be the back. And um, my plan is to do some rows of big stitch quilting in here to quilt it as well. Um, so all I'll just use as a background as I show you my tools. Um, main thing you're gonna need are needles for doing this. Um, I use big stitch quilting needles. Um, these are from Primitive Gatherings. They come with 12 in the tube and they're six dollars. Um, I imagine it'll be a decade before I need to order another one of these. Um, they are strong needles. Um, I am, you know, I've done more than a quilt with just one. Um, they are, um, Long, not super long, but long enough to take several stitches at once. Very strong, um, thick, and uh, yeah, that's what I use. Um, I'm sure you could use other needles. Just do your research. Um, I am using a DMC Pearl Cotton. This is a uh, eight pearl. Um, this is old. I uh, bought. I've bought pearl cotton at um, estate sales in the past. I don't know how old it is. It looks like 712 is the color number, um, but it's basically just ecru. Um, so I have used Valdani pearl cotton to um, for big stitch quilting for a quilt, and that was a pearl 12, and it was the same size as this. So I'm just pointing that out in case I don't know if this has changed or if in general DMC Pearl 8 matches Valdani Pearl 12, but if um, I was buying a random brand and I wanted to guess, I would say I would need a Pearl 12. Um, but you can use a thicker Pearl cotton. Um, you could use, say, a Valdani Pearl 8 and it'll be bigger, um, but plenty of people big stitch quilt with that. I don't know, um, I don't know if you could get away with the same needle size or not. Um, but you know, there's plenty of information out there. I just want to show you how I do it. Um, the other thing I use is a Hera marker. I use this to make the lines. Um, this is from Clover. I just bought this at Joann's. Um, but you could, I have a hired quilter, so you could also use the back of a butter knife um, if you want to try that. Um, if I'm doing straight lines, I'll also use a ruler like this um, for my straight guidance line. Now, the reason I use this is because. Um, it doesn't leave any actual marks on the fabric like a, you know, a pen or pencil would. Um, but you could certainly try out any of the, sorry, apologies. You could certainly try out any of the various mark, um, fabric marking tools. Um, you know, everyone says it, but it's so important. You really want to test it on something first. Um, not all fabrics are created the same way. Um, and you know, you want to make sure it's going to come out. So if I can avoid that, avoid using the markers on the fabric of something I've already pieced like this before, I will. So this is all I've ever used to mark my fabric for quilting. That being said, I haven't done anything complicated yet. I haven't done any fancy, fancy <laughs> patterns. Mostly what I do is just straight lines so I can just mark it with the ruler. Um, one thing I have to keep in mind in quilting this project bag is that it's not going to be washed like a quilt usually is. Um, so I definitely, you know, I want to, I do want to stay away from like a water soluble marker unless I, I know I can just dab it away um, because I don't want to run this under a bunch of water. Um, and then it's also kind of 
good to keep in mind even with the hair marker. I, I don't want to go crazy deep marks on this, um, although I do think I could iron them out. Um, so basically what I do to mark the fabric, I think I'll just show you right now um, just to give you an idea. So I want a hard surface underneath. You know, I could put this on my cutting mat. On, I'm just going to put this on the table. Apologies ahead of time if the table makes noise. Um, so in this case, I am just going to do it right down the middle of this fabric line. I know this, um, also apologies if you can hear my dog panting in the background. He likes to lay in the sun and then come in here and cool off. Um, so I know this finishes at one and a half inches, so roughly three quarters of an inch um, it will be the middle. Um, so I'm just going to hold it there and there we go. Just going to push down. I use this bottom of that curved side there. I just push it down go like that right along my ruler. And you can see there's the marked line. Um, and that is what I'm going to quilt through. And if time passes, that line will, you know, bounce back. And I can, you know, I can also, uh, again, iron it out. So I'm going to do every other line. I don't think it really needs to have um, every single line. Alright, so that's um, my marked lines for the back. Something I want to point out, um, here's how I've done it with my quilted um, for this project, the way I've done it. So now if this was a quilt I was working on, you would have your top applique layer, you have your batting in between, and then you'd have the quilt backing on the back. Um, this is not the same thing. It's not a quilt. It's going to be a project bag front and there's going to be a liner in it. So you're not going to see the back of what I'm quilting, the way that I'm making the back. Um, maybe there is, I'm sure there's a way that you make it so that that's the case, but this is just how I've done it. Um, so um, instead of just having this and then the batting, I like to put some fabric on the back. Normally I would just use like a muslin, but I'm low on muslin and I had this fabric. Um, this is a I got this for very inexpensive at Joann's. It was supposed to be a background in a baby quilt. Ended up I just got, it was a little too bright. Um, and so I'm, I have this piece of fabric that is kind of cheap fabric that I don't really know what to do with. And I thought, you know what, instead of going and paying for muslin, which might end up, it will probably cost me about the same. I'm just gonna use this cheap fabric. So point being that you can use it, you know, scrap fabric. Um, the only thing I want to keep in mind here is that my lining is going to be fairly light. So if I use, say, like an, a blue scrap fabric, um, it would probably show through. And I that, that could be okay, but I'd rather it not. Um, so this just worked out well. So I'm going to be quilting through three layers. Now, um, if you were making a quilt, you know that you would want your batting in this, and backing in this case to to be longer or wider than your um, top piece. Um, in this case, I actually would prefer it not be because um, when I sew this together, I don't want it to be too bulky. So this batting is going to shrink up a bit. I've actually even cut it a little bit less than the front. Um, but when I sew this all together, I don't want the batting to be included in the seam. Um, if this was a quilt, um, you know, I want to make sure I have batting behind everything, um, but it's not. It's just going to be a project bag. It's not going to be washed. Um, and so it's it's a little, I can make it a little more fragile than I would a quilt. So that is how I have everything layered here. Okay, so we've marked the back. Um, the, for the front, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do kind of a square around here to highlight this. Um, I'm going to do line right up here and then a line across here. Um, I'm going to do a line um, to kind of highlight the bird. So I'm going to go around the bird. I'm not going to mark that. I'm just kind of going to eyeball maybe like within an eighth of an inch and go around it. And I think maybe I'll go around the bottom of these leaves here. Um, but really, I mean, you can tell I'm just kind of making this up as I go along. Um, my this isn't quite how, when I made it, I, my idea was that it would, what I hope was when I pieced this front was that this was going to be one background and it was going to look like the bird on here and the, um, 
monogram on here, but the way I've pieced it, this kind of looks like its own square and as if it's missing something. At least that's how it looks to me. So um, I've thought about what the heck I should put there. Um, and I think what I'm going to do, because this is obviously a Blackbird Designs project bag and the recipient loves Blackbird Designs. So I think what I might do is kind of put a BBD right here. Um, it'll be very subtle. It'll be in the off-white. Um, nothing too obvious, but um, I'll have to figure that one out a little later because I just want to, uh, maybe from the same booklet as this one, I'll kind of get an idea of the, the way I want the letters formed. And then um, I'll have to figure out how I can mark it on here without leaving any permanent um, markings. So I'll have to get a little creative there, but that's just how it goes. Um, so I'm going to mark up the lines that I do want to mark up ahead of time. Um, and I'll just let you watch me do that. I'm going to do it within um, a quarter of an inch of um, the sewing lines here. All right, my lines are all marked up. All right, so now I have my threaded needle. I am just going to make one knot at the end of my thread. Now, because this is a small piece, I can just bring my needle up into the fabric and pull it up. Um, but I'm gonna show you how I would start it if this wasn't a small piece, um, if this was a bigger piece and I wasn't able to just access the edge. Um, because actually I'll have to do that over here with the bird. Um, I won't be able to come in from the side. So um, I'm going to quilt around this square. Um, as far as thread length, um, I'm, not, I'm not specific or um, strict on it. If I'm doing as long as I can, for example, say I'm doing a long row on a quilt, I'm, I guess I probably do maybe. Um, 20 to 24 inches in length. Um, so I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to go around this square um, and I'm going to start in this corner. I mean, normally I would just come right here in this corner um, from the edge, but to show you how I, I get in the thread. So basically what we're doing is we want the needle to come up at our starting point and we're going to take this knot, we're going to go from the top of the fabric and we're going to pop the knot into the fabric. So we're making a little bit of a hole. Um, but it won't be too obvious. What we're aiming to not do, but which I often do, is pull it so hard that it pops through the top and back out. Um, if that happens, then you just do it again, obviously. Um, so I'm going to come off from a side here, and I'm only underneath the top layer of fabric. Come up through this point here. Okay. Now I'm going to give it a pull. There we go. I didn't pull it so hard that it came out that time, but now it's nice and secure. All right. There is one tool that I forgot, and that is my, um, my thimble. All right. Got it. So this is just a thimble pad. Um, I've shown it in previous videos. Um, you buy them in a package, and you can reuse them um, for a while until they get gross. <laughs> okay. Um, so now I am holding the um, three layers together. I joined these layers together through um, using basting spray because it's a small project, um, but you can do whatever you choose. You know, your preferred way of basting. You could do it with thread needle, you could do it with safety pins, um, whatever works for you. Um, but in this case, I use some spray. All right, so um, the way I do big stitch quilting is um, I, I enjoy the handmade look. So, um, I'm not a perfectionist and my stitches are not going to be perfect, but they will follow the line that I marked in my fabric. Um, and so I'm really eyeballing it. I have kind of a look that I like, or a stitch length I like. I would say it's um, somewhere between a sixteenth of an inch and an eighth of an inch. Um, so I'm putting my needle down and then bringing it back up. And this is through all three layers each time. And now I'm going to stick it out a little bit. 
that same length, go back down. And then again, I'm kind of squeezing the fabric and pushing it with my thumbnail on top. And you can see there, I've got two little lumps. I'm going to push it through with my thimbled finger, pull it back out, run my thread there. And now I've got those two stitches. And I'm going to do that again and show you. Okay, and this is my attempt at doing a close-up. Okay, <laughs> so I tried to do the close-up there, and I was so focused on the camera angle that I got a little off my line here. Ooh. So, I am just going to go with it, though. Try to get back to my line gradually. And here we go. So, it takes a little practice um, to kind of get the feel for it, um, but... You can just see my little stitches there. You can tell that, you know, a machine didn't do that. Um, and that's what I like. So I'm going to keep stitching all the way around the square and I will kind of fast forward. Um, I'll speed it up so you don't have to watch the whole thing in real time. Okay, so I have gone all the way around the square. Um, as you may have noticed, when I was doing this last line, it got kind of awkward the way I was holding the fabric. I had to like scrunch it up like that. That's just what, you know, I kind of have to do what I have to do in order um, to get the right angle. Um, I tend to, I find that I naturally go from right to left um, when I'm doing my stitching. I can't seem to do it any other way. Um, now when I'm working on a quilt and I'm doing this, you can imagine you're you're holding a whole quilt um, and so the way I normally hold the fabric when I'm say in the middle of the quilt is I have my hand a holding hand under here and it just kind of like scrunches and holds it and it's very <laughs> kind of awkward it's a little awkward as I go through it but it it works um, so you kind of have to play around with it and see what you're comfortable with um, you can see my lines a little wavy not perfect again it takes practice um, and if it, you know, if it's extremely important to you to have it perfectly straight, then um, I'm sure you'll manage it. Um, so, oh, I'm so sorry about that table noise. Um, so I am at the end here. I am one stitch away from completing the square. And that's where I want to stop and tie a knot. Um, so what the idea here is that I'm going to kind of like the way we started, I'm going to make a knot and I'm going to pop it through the fabric so that's buried underneath. So I'm going to take this, um, you can kind of get an idea of my stitch length, so I want to make a knot about that distance on this thread, just a little bit longer. That's how far away my knot is going to be, so I'm just making it like right there. Okay, um, and now what I'm going to do is put my needle down where I want that stitch to end, and then I'm going to bring up the tip of my needle a little further away like that. We'll run this out here and then pop it back in. Okay, um, I made my stitch go a little wonky. I'll just kind of straighten it out best I can there. Um, and then I'll just cut that thread. And that's the first quilted part of the front of my bag.
Okay, so I've showed you um, how to do the straight line quilting um, on a line that I've marked out with the hair marker. Um, so I thought next I would just show you the process of stitching around the bird. Um, so what I, my plan here is to just go kind of, um, I guess it would be an eighth of an inch, um, but I'm not going to be, uh, I'm not going to be picky about it. I'm just kind of going to go around the bird, just not right next to the, the applique. Um, and I'm just going to go all around, all the way around. I don't think I'm going to record the entire process because I'm not that fast and you'll be sitting here for a while watching. Um, but my, yeah, my plan is to go around the whole bird. And then um, I will also end up doing kind of underneath this um, stem and these leaves. I'm not going to go around the whole thing, just like the underneath to highlight it. And then I'll go along the side here. And I think I'll go along maybe the top here. Um, but you get the idea. Um, just kind of highlight the pieces. Um, if you're doing this, um, you know, you could be creative. Pick what you would like to highlight and how you would like to highlight it. Um, you can kind of see how it makes this like puff up effect here. Um, and just, yeah, it's pretty cute. So I think I will go in um, right here where the uh, wing meets the body of the bird. So again, um, I've tied my one knot at the end of my thread. Just putting my needle in the top layer here, poking it out where I want to start. Pushing it through. Try to pop this in. There we go. All right, it's nice and secure. Now I'm gonna get ugly and scrunch it all up in my hand <laughs> and do my stitches. Um, so if you don't like the idea of having to like play around and stitch length and practice and try to get it right, um, look up, you know, some for some hints online because there are ways that you can find. To, um, I noticed uh, Lori does something um, where she marks on her nail. I don't know if it's for the, I can't remember what it was for. It wasn't the quilting. It was something else. Um, but you know, you need kind of measured stitches in wool applique as well. But you could mark on your nail like. Um, say you wanted your stitches to be a sixteenth of an inch or an eighth of an inch, you can mark those two lines on your nail and then you could just hold them up and compare it. Um, there's like certain kinds of um, tapes that you can stick to your fabric um, that will, you know, come off without leaving a residue and they're, they've got the markings on there measured out and you can just kind of follow that. Um, that could be a good way to get used to it and then I think you'll find over time that you're able to eyeball it. I'm just rotating it as I go along. Um, I don't know if it's the way to do it, but the way I do it, if I need to go around like say a, a sharp point or something, or the, the thread just isn't ending in a convenient part for where I need to restart it, um, I will do a stab down through and then come to the bottom and poke it up where I need to go if I have to. Um, same if I meet like an area somewhere where I've got um, several layers because I, I don't seem to have nailed down when I'm piecing um, the proper way to to press all my seams. Um, so sometimes I'll have a bulky area and I'll go to hand quilt it and it'll be a little tough and I might just have to do a, a little cheat and like stab through instead of doing it all from the top. Whatever works in my opinion. You know, use whatever thimble works for you, but um, I think you will find that you really do. You need a thimble for this. All right, so you get the idea. I'm just kind of going around following the shape. Um, and here I had to kind of squeeze through. Um, but mostly I'm just trying to go about that width from the piece. Um, and so I'm just going to go ahead and stitch around the whole bird. All right, so I have finished stitching around my bird. Um, just to kind of give you a closer up view. That's what it looks like. Nothing fancy. Again, I'm really just, you know, 
it looks homemade. Um, I have not stitched around applique or quilted, I mean around applique before. Um, I have only made one hand applique quilt so far and I have not yet quilted it. So this was um, a great way to test that out and see what I like. Um, and it was fun. It was um, easier than I thought it would be, honestly. So um, again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do those highlights that I mentioned and do the other straight lines on here um, for the top. What I'll do is just some random lines like this, um, just to give it some kind of texture. Um, and then I already showed you how I'm going to do the back. Um, and then I will need to try to sew all of these pieces together and add my zipper in there and everything. Um, and when it's done, I will show you a clip of what it looks like um, because I can't post this anyway until it is fully complete and sent off to its recipient. All right, and through the magic of editing, here is my completed project bag. Um, I did try to put letters here, but it didn't work out, so I just did some um, lines to kind of go with the flow of the tail. Um, you can see I did those random lines at the top here. And then I did some rows of big stitch quilting on the back. And now it's a completed project bag. I used a light color for the lining. This is um, Blackbird Designs fabric. And I love how it turned out. So that's the full process. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any tips you'd like to share or any questions, please let me know in the comments below. And uh, thanks for hanging out with me through this quilt along. Um, if you make a project and you share it on Instagram or on YouTube, I'd love to see it. So please feel free to tag me or um, add the hashtag BBDQAL. Thanks a lot.